whole universe is made of matter. You, me, living, non-living, everything. But there is one more thing called antimatter. Anything that occupies space and possesses mass can be considered as matter, which consists of particles like protons, neutrons, electrons. Well, in simple words, antimatter is same as matter with the opposite charge. For example, proton is positively charged particle in matter, whereas in antimatter it is negatively charged. Antimatter is the mirror image of ordinary matter. It's okay. extremely rare. Okay. If I had some in my hand, it looked like ordinary matter. It has the same chemical properties, except if I touch it, it would explode and destroy all of New York City, parts of Connecticut and New Jersey. Oh. In 1928, Paul Dirac realized that his relativistic version of Schrodinger's wave equation for the electrons predicted the possibility of anti-electrons. Like, if x square is equal to 4, it has two solutions, 2 and negative 2. When the matter and antimatter come in contact, annihilate one another, leaving behind pure energy. When the universe formed, Big Bang should have created equal amounts of matter and antimatter. But Today everything that we see from the smallest life forms of the earth to the largest stellar objects are made of almost entirely of matter. One of the greatest challenges in physics now is to figure out what happened to the antimatter or why we see a symmetry between matter and antimatter. Most of the theories about how matter got upper hand over antimatter fall into two main camps. One called electroweak baryogenesis, which put forward extra versions of Higgs boson, the goddamn particle. If these Higgs cousins exist, they could have helped to set an unexpected phase transition similar to the shift when water changes to gas. The other leading theory is called leptogenesis. According to this, in addition to the regular neutrinos, there could be extremely heavy neutrinos that are so enormous. When these particles inevitably broke down into smaller, more stable species, they might have produced slightly more matter than antimatter byproducts. Recent T2K experiment by JPAC Japan got results which supports this theory. However, there is no complete experimental evidence for why there is asymmetry between matter and antimatter yet. Subscribe the channel for more interesting videos. We appreciate your likes and comments.